Hello and welcome to Digital Goulash. My name is Chucky and today we're going to take a look at Photoshop Elements and how to use layers. I've been asked recently what exactly are layers and why would I want to use them? A lot of people seem to be getting confused with them. Well the first thing I want to go over exactly what is a layer. The second thing I want to cover is what an adjustment layer is and the third thing I want to cover is what a layer mask is. Now what we're going to do when we talk about layers, we're going to talk about copying layers, we're going to talk about layer order, and we're going to talk about blending modes. There's going to be about six things that I'm going to cover here. Let's take a look at our picture from Ed Jordan over here, this picture of this football player and the kicker, and I want to thank him using the Creative Commons Flickr licensing. Now we've just had the Breast Cancer Awareness Month, so what I'd like to do in honor of that I'm going to go over here into my foreground color and I'm going to select pink right there. I'm going to select that. And then I'm going to select a brush to paint with. So I'm going to paint my grass pink right there. You notice that a lot of the football players, they were using pink towels, they were using pink socks, they had all sorts of different kinds of pink stuff. So I'm going to make the grass pink right there. So let's go ahead and paint that. This is looking great. There we go. Oh, wow. Not very good with this trackpad, and I accidentally painted over his knee. So the first thing I need to do is I need to go over to the eraser tool, which is also E on the keyboard, and I'm just going to erase that pink. Wow, what exactly is happening? Well, let me go ahead and tell you what is happening. On a locked layer over here, when you're on a background layer, whenever you use the eraser tool, it erases by placing the background color on whatever it is that you're trying to erase. So when you're using a paintbrush, it takes the foreground tool and whenever you're erasing it uses the background color over there. Now what can I do with this picture? Well, it's pretty much ruined because I can't get any of that back. So I either have to do an undo or I have to go over here under edit and I have to revert my picture. Now what I could have done is I could have went over here under my layers palette and this is what the lesson is about adding a new layer so at the very bottom where the dog ear icon is you click it and as you can see there is a transparent layer right there you can see the checkerboard and imagine this as a piece of glass you can paint on your piece of glass you can use some semi-transparent markers on the glass and you can move your glass. So let's go ahead and select the brush again or the B on the keyboard and let's go ahead and paint once again on our grass. So there we go. Just gonna do a real quick job right here. Paint, 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 paint and then I'm going to duplicate my mistake by painting over his knee. Oh, there we go. Oops. Now let's go ahead and click on the eraser tool and I come over there and voila! I erase and as you can see I've erased over his knee. I can also take my move tool right there and I can move this around wherever I want to. Now you're probably wondering this looks really awful and it doesn't look realistic. Now that's where we're going to get into the blending mode which is right up here. That's the normal blending mode. It makes it look like paint. When you click on it and you go down to either overlay or soft light, one of these, we click on these. As you can see, this one looks more kind of like a semi-transparent marker that you're coloring over your picture. This, Remember, imagine this is a piece of glass and you're taking your semi-transparent marker and you are painting or you're marking and coloring over the grass. And as you can see, it's pretty much turning the grass pink. Now let's go ahead and let's erase the whole thing. Go ahead and erase this, la la la, and we can erase all of this. You can also go over here if you just want to do a quick thing, you can come over here and you can delete your layer by dragging it over into the trash. So that is the layer right there. The next thing I want to cover is the copying of the layer. Why is it that we copy layers? Let's go ahead and do a Command J. I'll also show you where you can find that. That's under Layer New, Layer Via Copy. And what that'll do is it'll copy the entire picture right there. Now, why would we want to do that? One reason is to keep the original photo underneath and then any kind of adjusted photo on top. Let me go ahead and drag that one into the trash. What if you just want to copy a piece of your photo? 
Let's go ahead and do that now. I'm going to take my selection tool. I'm going to use the magnetic lasso and I'm going to trace this guy right here. Go ahead and put a couple dots down. Do the best I can trying to trace around him. And there we go. So now that I kind of have him traced, you can do a much better job. You can see that the marching ants, if I go under layer, new layer via copy, or I do my command J, it doesn't look like anything's changed except my marching ants have gone away. Let's go ahead and turn the visibility layer for my background off. As you can see, it copied whatever it was that was inside my marching ants. Well, the beauty of having a layer is, is that you can go to your move tool right there and you can move this guy around once you have him duplicated and you can put many of him. Now what if I want to duplicate him again? Well, yes, Command J will duplicate him again. So now you have three of them. So just like the Matrix, you can just do a Command J and Mr. Smith, you can just keep adding them and adding them and adding them until there are just tons and tons and tons of these guys right there. So there we go, that is copying a layer and copying a portion of a layer. Let's go ahead and go back to edit and I'm gonna revert this thing again. There we go, I'm gonna revert it to my original photo. Now what if we wanted to go in here and we wanted to have these guys in color and then everyone else in black and white? Well, once again, we'd have to go over here and we'd have to use our magnetic lasso and I'd have to try to do a fairly decent job tracing him, which I am not, but you would do a much better job at tracing him right there. And I just keep going. I want to have them in color and I want to have everyone else in black and white. That way the football players stand out really well and everyone else doesn't become too much of a distraction. So now I have them selected, <laughs> very poorly by the way, and I want to go over here and introduce you to the adjustment layer, which is right here. Now I'm going to add a hue and saturation adjustment layer, and then I'm going to go over to where it's at, and I'm going to take the saturation slider, which just means color, and I'm going to desaturate it, just meaning I'm going to take out all the color. Oh no! It's the opposite of what I wanted. Look at that. They're in black and white. I guess it looks kind of cool, but they're in black and white and everybody else is in color. And I guess that works, but that's not really what I wanted. So I'm going to do the Command Z or the Undo, and I'm going to do it twice, and there we have it. We have them selected. So how do I change this so that everybody else is in black and white? Well, you can go under Select and you can choose Inverse, which is Command Shift I. And what that'll do is it'll swap out the marching ants to everything else. Now I'm going to go over here. I'm going to select my adjustment layer right there. I'm going to go to hue and saturation. I'm going to do the same thing again. I'm going to grab my saturation slider and then take the saturation out. And as you can see, everybody else turned black and white except my two football players, which are now in color. So we've covered the blending mode we've covered the adjustment layer, we've covered copying the entire layer and copying portions of the layer. The next thing I want to do is I want to cover the order. So I'm going to add some text. So let me go ahead and let me pick a color here. I'll pick a pink color and let me go ahead and put kickers and let's pick another one are great. Except on this one, let me go ahead and change the color to something different so that you can see what I'm doing. And well, let's try that again. Are great. Let's go ahead and try the color green or sea foam or whatever it is that you want to call it. And there we go. I'm going to use our move tool. I'm going to move kickers. Are great. Wow, look at that. As you can see, the words are great or above the word kickers. And as you can see in our layers palette, are great is on the top and below it is the word kicker. So the, this is the order from top to bottom on how you're going to see it in your photo. So what if I wanted kickers on top and are great underneath? 
Well, we could go over here and we could just change the order of things by grabbing this word kickers and dragging it above the word are great. So now we have kickers are great and are great is underneath. So let's go ahead and have a review there. We've covered copying layers with the command J and copying portions of layers, which is making a selection and copying it with the command J or the layer, new layer. We've covered the layer order. We've covered the blending mode, which was the very beginning when I painted the grass. One of them looked like paint and the other one looked like a magic marker. Let's go over here. We covered adjustment layers right over there. I'm going to go ahead and take that out. We've covered adjustment layers and we've also covered layer layers. Well, what's the last thing that we need to cover? Well, the last thing that we need to cover are layer masks right there. So what exactly is a layer mask? Well, it's very similar to this thing right over here. I'm going to go over and I'm going to revert my image back to the original one. There is my picture of my kicker and the guy, the placeholder right there. So why would someone want to use a layer mask, being able to mask something off? Usually we use a layer mask when we have two photos and we want to use part of one photo, we want to mask it off and then use a part of another photo. Let me give you an example here. I'm going to do the copy the layer right here with the command J and then I'm going to do something to this particular photo. I'm going to go over to enhance and I'm going to adjust my lighting and I'm going to go over to my levels and I'm going to really darken this down. I'm going to move the sliders over right over here so that it's really really dark in there. So now I have one dark picture and I have one that's correctly exposed there. And maybe what I would like to do is I'd like to go in here and I want them light and I want the background dark so that you, everybody's looking at the kicker and the placeholder. Well one way you could do that is you could use a layer mask. If I go in here and I do the same thing again. I select these guys, which I'm doing a really, really, really bad job doing. I'm selecting these guys over here. We have it. I'm selecting them. I'm selecting them. And there we go. And let's go ahead. Now that I've selected them, I'm going to go down to the layer mask and add the layer mask. Oh no, they're dark and everyone else is light. Ah, oh, it's exactly the opposite of what I wanted to do. Let's go ahead and do a command Z right there. Now, if I wanted to select everybody else, do you remember what we did? Well, we went over here and we went under select and we selected the inverse, which is command shift I. Now we selected everything else. Let's go ahead and hit the layer mask again. And as you can see, what we're doing is, is that we're masking this layer off right there so that this image can bleed through anywhere that it is black. So we have the original image right here bleeding through and then we have this image over here. Let's go ahead and do a quick review right there. We've gone through our layers. Our layer was just like it was a piece of glass that you can paint on or cut on or uh, color on. We had our adjustment layer in which I changed part of the picture as black and white and the other part of the picture as color. And we have a layer mask right here when we have two pictures and you want to see a portion of one picture and a portion of another picture. Next thing we covered was the blending mode. That was as if we painted one with paint and the other one we painted with a magic marker. The other thing we did was we did a copy, which is a layer via copy. Go ahead and do that. A layer via copy, which was under the layer, new layer via copy right there, or we did a command J. And the last thing that we covered was the layer order. We went ahead and we put two different pieces of text on there and the one that was on top was the one that you were going to see and the other one that was on bottom was the one that was going to be hidden. I hope you learned a little bit about layers here. If you haven't done so already, please subscribe to my videos, give me a thumbs up, give me a like and favorite my videos. Cheers!